Good morning, and welcome to today's Dream to Travel Forum. This week, this week's theme of the festival is trust. And so thank you very much for joining us as we celebrate the contribution of, of all travel and tourism stakeholders from both the public and private sector in rebuilding traveler trust and hope for a more sustainable, responsible, and resilient travel and tourism industry. Um, it's appropriate that for this week's theme on trust, we are working with our destination partner, the Tourism Authority of Thailand, as we highlight the beautiful country of Thailand. First off, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul Brangan. I am the Director of Communications and External Affairs at the Pacific Asia Travel Association, or otherwise known as PATA. Um, and I will be your host for today. We have a great uh, program today. We have a great panel with um, speakers from Bangkok Airways, the Siam Hotel, as well as TAT. But before we get to that, I just wanna go through a couple of notes um, about Zoom for those of you who are unfamiliar. So, excuse me. So as you can see, at the bottom of your screen, you'll have a toolbar. So there's two functions that I want to highlight for you. There's the chat function, the chat, oh, a little misspelling there, but use the chat function to engage with other participants. So introduce yourself, say hello, um, just, you know, use that function for chat only. Do not submit questions to the speakers using this function. As you can see, there is a Q&A function. So any questions you want to submit to the speakers and panelists, please use the Q&A function. I know a lot of times people also raise their hands. There's no need to raise your hand. If you have a question, send it in the q and If you have a comment, send it in the chat. We have a team here that can then respond accordingly to your requests, um, whether it's a problem or it's a question. So that is all with Zoom. And let me go to the next slide here. I'm just gonna quickly run through the agenda. So as I said, we have a great panel discussion later, this, uh, later in this program. But first we'll open up with remarks from Pata followed by remote remarks by the Tourism Authority of Thailand. So without further ado, I would like to just lead right into the opening remarks and invite PADA CEO, Dr. Mario Hardy to join us for today's forum. Mario. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. It's a great pleasure to have everyone actually joining us today. Uh, this is the first forum out of the Dream uh, to Travel Festival, a one-month festival of activities and experiences so that all of you can re-engage with the industry, re-engage with friends and colleagues from across the world, and also uh, hopefully make some new friends along the way. The theme of this week is actually trust. Now, there has been a lot of discussion in the industry. We had actually some yesterday also about safety, health, sanitization, different protocols are actually being implemented by airlines, shopping malls, restaurants, spas, and of course, the hospitality sectors in general. And TAT has done a fantastic job at putting these protocols in place and giving us some guidance as an industry on the way forward. These protocols are necessary for us to actually restart the industry. But there is also one other thing which is really important for us moving forward. Beyond the protocols, beyond the implementations of health and safety and sanitization protocols in place, we need to regain the confidence and the trust of the travelers. And we can only do this by all working together, united as an industry, from people from every sector, from airlines to hospitality, to others within the sectors, jointly working in regaining that confidence and that trust with the travelers that it's okay for you to come and visit us in Thailand because we have a fantastic product to actually offer you. Thailand is very well known for its service industry, for its beautiful smiles, being welcoming and being a very safe environment. So how do we actually regain that trust? So I'm very pleased today that we're actually joined by a group of panelists who from airline and hospitality, and of course from, from TAT as well, to share with us what is actually being done today and what do we need to move moving forward to ensure that we have an industry that thrives actually moving forward into the future. 
I will actually pass like the microphone to Paul. And again, thank you very much and enjoy today's forum. Thank you very much, Mario, um, for those words. And now we will now go to our next speaker. Uh, for welcome remarks. So joining us from the TAT office, please welcome Kun Susura Wanapinyosik. She's a deputy governor for international marketing, Europe, Africa, Middle East, and the Americas at the Tourism Authority of Thailand. Kun Susura, please turn your camera. So and Sawadika. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, members of Prata, travel community, colleagues, and everyone. It's my pleasure to meet everybody in the Prata Dream to Travel Festival, which is held for the first time today. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an impact worldwide, and the tourism industry is the hardest hit. During this time, um, we cannot travel to see each other. So a virtual event is a virtual change to connect and keep us close together, thanks for the technology. It is an honor for Thailand to present the tourism situation in Thailand in the first week of the event, which is being held between 22nd to 26th June, with the theme, Amazing Thailand Touched Destination. The information, from the surveys of different organizations show that the destination tourists choose to go uh, in the post-COVID-19 era is the one that they trust in. It's good management of hygiene, hygienic measures. TAT is aware of this concern, hence we have set up the Amazing Thailand Safety and Health Administration, or SHAR standard, for Thai entrepreneurs who have business in hotels, transportation, tours and travel agencies, spa, airlines, restaurants, etc., to comply for welcoming visitors that you should have already learned uh, in the details yesterday. Furthermore, TAT will offer you an interesting and useful session. For example, the updated tourism situation in Thailand from the people who live in the main tourist attraction, just as Rabi Phuket, Samui, Hua Hin, Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Pattaya, and Phang Nga, followed by easy and healthy activity you can do at home to relax from stress, such as body and soul healing with massage, yoga practice, healthy food cooking, and explore Thailand's attraction after COVID-19. I hope everyone will gain knowledge and enjoy the activities we deliver this time. And this will inspire you to present Thailand to your clients and alliance forever. On behalf of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, I would like to thank everyone for your time and support Thailand from the past and into the future. I hope you stay healthy. Thank you very much, Kunsi Sura. So now we'll jump right into our panel discussion. Uh, so, uh, panel discussion today is, oops, is, sorry, is about, go back here a second, is about rebuilding trust. And as Mara said, trust is really important during this time where uh, a lot of travel confidence is extremely low. So moderating today's panel, all the way joining us from Japan, uh, she will be moderating the session. She's the presenter on BBC's The Travel Show. So please welcome Ms. Carmen Roberts. Carmen. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thanks, everyone, for having me. Um, I'll be joined on the panel, um, obviously, by uh, Kun Sri Suda. Uh, thank you for your remarks. It was really interesting to hear um, about the hygiene standards. And I guess if you'd asked people pre-COVID, they would not have rated hygiene or health measures as such on high on their priority list for travel. Um, I'm also joined on my panel by Nick Downing, the general manager of the CM, a prestigious urban hotel based in Bangkok. Um, Nick has worked extensively in the hotel industry across Asia as well as Australia. And I'm also joined by Khun Varong Israsina, who's been with Bangkok Airways for 22 years, but only recently took up his position of 
Vice President of Marketing just a few months before the pandemic. Goodness me, what a baptism by fire that must have been, Kun Verong. So um, let me kick off the discussion. Um, can you think back to when your last international holiday was? Holiday, not uh, business travel. And my last international holiday was actually almost a year ago. You know, because in Japan we had, last year we had the Rugby World Cup, so we didn't go anywhere. We also, uh, we went skiing in Japan at Christmas. So it's almost been a year, which is a crazy prospect. And for me, it's, it's quite a disconcerting, I guess, not having a international holiday to look forward to. Um, can you remember when your last international holiday was? And I guess that's the $64 million question. When is everything going to be, go back to normal, if at all? Um, and you know, what must we do to gain that traveler's trust to get things back to normal? Shall we kick off with uh, Kun Varong, perhaps from uh, Bangkok Airways? What, what's Bangkok Airways doing right now to try and gain trust? Um, it's me, okay, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I think, first of all, 28 days of COVID-free in Thailand is, all, is already uh, something that Thailand should be proud of. It's, it's a great branding to our country. Um, it's, it's already uh, uh, creates a sense of trust of, of Thailand as being a very safe destination that once the country opening up to People will, will choose Thailand as their top priority, and let's let's keep that that momentum forward. Let's let's keep doing well, and we are doing well already, and and keep improving at it and doing even better. As per Bangkok Airways, we we definitely um, 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 helped uh, Thailand uh, building trust by by following all the safety. Uh, precautionaries uh, imposed by the civil uh, aviation of Thailand by the government of, of the, um, restricting, uh, complying and enforcing um, the, um, um, our procedures complying to the all rules uh, um, and upon check-in on our aircraft, um, the plane or at the airport. Um, everything necessary we will do at maximum level and I promise you we will not let our guards down because trust is everything. Because if, we, if people have trust, then people will look, uh, 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 people will choose you. But Bangkok Airways is the only small mechanism, me mechanic part of, the, 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 of, of, of how to build trust in Thailand. It's everyone. It's the, the responsibility of everybody in the industry. Actually, is a responsibility of every Thai citizen and resident who are living in Thailand um, um, to help building uh, the branding of trust um, to be seen by the rest of the world. Um, I'd like to share a little bit on, on, on the community um, that, that we, we touch base with and they really come together and trying to bring uh, their destination uh, back to in, the, in the tourism uh, um, um, uh, arena. I like to mention about people, uh, the community in Koh Samui. As you may know, we are the, the main operators uh, in Koh Samui in terms of flight, and also we operate uh, a small airport in Koh Samui. Um, the community consists of uh, hotels, the locals, um, the uh, local to, uh, government offices, um, uh, Samui travel associations, spa, restaurants, and tourism authority of Thailand, uh, Kosovo chapter. And of course, Bangkok Airways. Really, really come together and sit together and, and see how we can bring Kosovo back in the tourism to, uh, scene. Flying back into Kosovo is not the decision Bangkok Airways. It's the decision of the community. We stopped flying to, since the beginning of April, we cease operation uh, into Tsumui. We actually cease operation to everywhere. And it's been no operations uh, since then. It's almost uh, a month and a half. And, 
And then we sit with the community and, and ask them, when is the appropriate time to fly? Some will say, first of May. Some say, no, at the end of May. Some say, no, well, let's wait until the end of June. Some say, let's don't fly and wait until uh, things recover. Remember that um, eight, eight weeks ago, things are not uh, as clear as this as now. It's, now it's clear, but it's still very, very unclear in the future. But eight, months, uh, eight weeks ago, it's very unclear. You don't even know what's going to happen on the next day. So we communities um, sit together and they came to a consensus. They said, 15 of May is the time that uh, Bangkok Airways should fly. And, and we've been endorsed by the Civil Aviation of Thailand and also the governor of Suratani say, okay, you go, you fly. So 15 it is, we started a very, uh, two small flights, um, ATRs. Uh, you, uh, you know the ATR is a propeller aircraft, uh, 70 seaters, but 70 seaters, we can only take 35 people on board because we have to obey the social distancing rule imposed by the government. So 35 people on board on a seven seater aircraft, we start the engine and we start losing the money already. But we have to do it because we have to fly. We have to tell the people that back always is coming back in business. And that's to build trust. Trust is only happen when, when people see that you are really practicing on it. We're operating to build trust. We're operating to show that the people uh, that Samui is now starting to welcome. To, uh, uh, say, um, I don't want to say tourist again, but uh, at, at, at that moment, uh, we started on the 15th. We don't even know who's going to fly with us, but we have to start somewhere. And, and I'm glad that we kept flying since uh, the 15th of May. Um, the Samui community came in again after a few days of operation. They noticed that the, the quarantine line at Samui Airport is very long. It takes 30 minutes per person, and that's painful for people to travel. Imagine uh, people have to come to the airport two hours before, um, wearing masks, and fly for another an, an hour and a half, wearing masks, not allowing to consume, ha have any consumption of meal, food, not allowed to drink. That's, that's, that's the rule and regulation of Thailand. But people comply, everybody complied, and we stick strictly adhere to the rules. And imagine they get off the plane and they go to the, the Samui airport and they have to go through this, this 30 minutes of quarantine again. So Samui community came in and said, Let's do something. Let's introduce something that, that ease the pain of the passengers. And that's wonderful. They came up with this Samui Health Pass QR code that you can load at, upon checking at Zodobu. And it's required you to fill in all the information that's required by the Samui Airport, by the, not by the Samui Airport, by the, the health authority of Kosovo, of Suratani. So they filled in everything. As soon as they arrived, it's much painless than before because they're going through, they're going through the, the quarantine procedure in less than 10 minutes. Reported last night, now it's less than 10 minutes. They're getting better at it. Um, so what i like to, to, to point out is that when the community really put their heads and their hands together, they really create something with, with good result and it shows. Um, so back to the 15th of May, we're starting a uh, 280 flight, and then suddenly it's three, it's four, five, and the six flights is not propeller anymore, it's a jet aircraft uh, flying into, with more capacity, uh, servicing into some. So one might, might, must ask, who are they traveling? Who are the travelers? They are the residents, the people to, uh, who are living in Bangkok and some week. Business travelers, of course. But the Tamu Help Pass has told us something. Is they're collecting the, uh, the numbers of the purpose of journey. And it says in the last three weeks, 55% of the, the people who travel with us into Tamu is actually tourists. Wow, tourists. It's been, it's been quite some time that we don't have uh, tourists uh, traveling anywhere. And, 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 and Thailand is, I think we are lucky that uh, the country somehow did well enough to, to allow people to, 
feel free to travel. Meaning that um, the capacity is only 300 uh, seats uh, a day now. Um, uh, so meaning that 170 people are going to Sungui a day is uh, uh, a tourist. Nothing compared to pre-COVID uh, numbers where we carry thousands of people into to Sungui, but it's it a start. I almost can say that it's a, it's a light at the very far end of the tunnel that we're looking for is shining a little bit, but that's it's 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 heartwarming. It, it tells us that um, we can business is coming back slowly, but but it gives us hope. Um, and I like to pass it on to others who who who's, uh, who's, who's waiting for hope. To, at least Bangkok Airways and, and Samui are starting to see that that hope is very far still, but it's I know it's coming. It's going to take some time. Back to the Samui community, they're doing something uh, even more than, than 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 what they have achieved. They they actually sat together and with the help of Tourism Authority of Thailand, we they actually going to have a travel booth being held in in Bangkok on the third. The fourth and the fifth of July at one of the major department stores in Bangkok, uh, the Central World, uh, if I'm not, not mistaken. A travel booth post COVID era. And that's wonderful. Um, there will be a, quite a, a lot of hotels participating. Ferries, you can, you can go to some way by ferries from Suratani also. And of course, Bangkok Airways will be there providing uh, really, uh, really good fares for to attract uh, people to start traveling again to some way. I don't know how it's going to turn out. There could be a lot of people. It, there might not be a lot of people, but, uh, but it's a start. And a start is hope. And hope is good enough for now. And that's my view. Thank you. Thank you, Kun Varong. That was so interesting to hear yeah. that the Samui community actually told Bangkok Airways when to come in. I, I would have thought it would be the other way around. And that, that's really, really interesting and telling. And so, so great to hear that you're engaging the local community. Um, I'm just interested very quickly before we move on to Nick Downing. Um, is that the case with all your destinations that you consult with the community or is that just very unique to Koh Samui? Um, we have special relationship with actually we're talking to 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 all the communities uh, in, um, 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 or the decisions we'll be flying. We're not resuming to, to all the decisions we're flying at the moment. We're flying to uh, to Chiang Mai and to uh, uh, Phuket. We'll start soon. But we have special relationship with uh, so many people, uh, and I think uh, COVID era has God has really brought us together. And I see really, really powerful en energy and synergy uh, within that community. So um, we are very proud of that. Great. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to Nick Downing to give us a perspective of what's happening in the, the hotel industry. Nick, what's it looking like from a hotelier's point of view? Thanks for, for having us, Carmen, and, and to Pata, and thanks, Mario, for, for inviting us to come on. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Thailand was sort of seen as one of the, the first sort of trouble zones after it all sort of broke out, if you remember. And since then, Thailand's just come through as sort of a, a sort of shining light in the, in the region. And I think the acknowledgement is that Thailand and, and Bangkok and the surrounding areas have actually handled the virus quite well. Um, and that, you know, there is recognition around the world that we're starting to come out of, out of, uh, a lot of the different phases so you know in some ways here on the ground in, in a lot of ways it almost feels like life is returning to normal people are out and about the traffic in back is back the river is you know i'm overlooking the river here from the hotel and you can start to see there's there's life coming back into the city which is great that being said um you know there's we're in touch with a lot of our international contacts and trying to judge exactly when the business is going to come back and I think part of the problem at the moment is 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 really transport. It's it's and and knowing, you know, how to get somewhere safely and when they're going to be able to travel. Um, you know, we talk about trust in terms of health and safety, which is one thing I, 
I can talk about, but it's also trust about, you know, if they're going to pay for an airfare or pay for a hotel or when are they going to be able to travel? You know, we're getting a lot of inquiries about will we be flexible with cancellation fees or, you know, if we're booking for, for Christmas New Year, which we've got bookings for Christmas New Year coming to our event again. Um, you know, we've still got bookings, but there's a lot of questions about what happens if we can or cannot travel at the moment. So there is all of those sort of issues. I think in terms of the health and safety, yes, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time at the moment. How do we open safely? You know, we, we actually at the Siam here, we're only 39 villas and suites, so we're quite small at the top end. Um, we closed down on the 1st of April, um, made a conscious decision to do some works around the hotel. We're renovating the pool, etc. Um, but the issue is, you know, when can we really justify to reopen again, knowing that, you know, the majority of our business is international. Um, and yes, we can open for staycation business, local markets, and, you know, that's where the market is at the moment. But, you know, when are we going to be able to welcome guests back from, you know, the US, Europe, you know, even our, our more regional markets like, um, you know, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Australia, I mean, Australia, you can't even fly out of the country this year. So, you know, our contacts there are just saying, we'll see you next year. So it, it, how do we balance all of that? And then, you know, I, I think we're going through the, the I guess, the certification of, of how, to, how to build the trust in terms of health and safety. So yes, we're, you know, we're working with the SHA, which um, Kun Sisuda mentioned earlier in terms of the, the between the Thailand uh, authority as well as uh, Ministry of Health. So the Safety and Health uh, uh, Administration, SHA certification. So we're going through all of what do we need to prepare to do that. Um, that being said, you know, and Kun Varong mentioned this earlier, you know, two months is a lifetime, you know, two weeks things change. What, what we're preparing for now in terms of health and safety certification Will that still be the case in like three, four, six months? So we all, you know, we've been going out to restaurants now and we've almost gone from seeing people in hazmat suits now to being much more relaxed. So I think it, it's going to be a fine balance. How do we, how do we approach this going forward? Um, and how do we also look at that from an international perspective, not just local perspective? Um, you know, a lot of our, our, the companies that we work for, a lot of, um, a lot of the, the agents that we work with are all questioning us, like, um, you know, how, how will it be when we get there? When can we, when can we get there? But there's just too, there's too many variables at the moment, to be honest. Okay, that's, uh, it's, it's interesting to hear from, from a hotelier's point of view, you know, um, and you've taken the executive decision to stay closed. When, when will your hotel reopen, Nick? Well, it's interesting. We, we made some when a lot of hotels open, well, closed around April when it really hit. And um, a lot of people put a, a, fit, a, you know, a date anywhere from one month to October. We never actually put a date out there at the beginning and we sort of keep reviewing it based on the circumstances. So originally we said, okay, and you know, in, in April we thought, yes, we're gonna open in maybe June or July and you know, we'll be past it and we'll be back to normal or at least on a way to normal. Um, at the moment, we're currently looking at August, September. Um, and you know, we're, part of that is a business decision. Um, Kun Barong said something very interesting and it, it's very much at our heart at Super Souls. Uh, you know, we're part of a, a smaller uh, independent group. Um, led by a private family here in Thailand. And, you know, we're very lucky. We've got still the majority of our team together. We've kept the motivation. We want to open. We want to deal with whatever guests we have. But in the end, we're actually achieving quite a lot still by being closed. As I say we're doing renovation work around the hotel. So it's, it's a moving target. You know, we've, we've got some business in, in September, which is looking positive. It's, it's mainly local. So we've got some small events, small weddings. Uh, we're reaching out to them constantly and they're, they're still saying they're interested to come and they're still, you know, people want to get back to life. They, they want to do these events. Um, you know, we've got a couple of weddings even from um, international. We've got one from Hong Kong that's still sort of in the balance. Are they going to be able to get here? Do they still want to do it? They're still holding it at the moment, but we just don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's questionable. But at the moment, we, we want to open as soon as we can. And once the works are finished, we'll, we'll do what we can, even if we have to open on a limited basis. 
a restaurant here by the river is quite popular with the local market and we've got a boat that goes up and down the river and you know we've got regular guests calling almost every day are you opening yet they just want to come they just want to come and sit by the river and have dinner so you know we, we'd love to be able to do that again what's going to be the deciding factor on when you open it's a combination of things we honestly it, it is going to be a business decision we need to make sure that you know to actually and I was speaking with our owners the other day and, you know, one of them said to me, who would have thought reopening would be harder than closing? You know, and it, it is something, you know, we're actually more of a resort than a high rise building. It's not as easy as turning on a lamp. Um, you know, we've got gardens, we've got, you know, huge landscapes where Bill Bensley designed. So of course we've got landscaping everywhere. Um, you know, and to actually keep it running, we've, we've got a core group that are still here. But it's it is it's going to be a it's going to be a business decision. Are we going to be able to generate enough you know money and enough enough revenue to cover what we want to do? But at some point we have to open. You know we're a hotel. We're we're hoteliers at heart. We we need people, and you know we'll make that decision as quickly as we can. Okay. It was interesting that Kun Varong also mentioned that you know Thailand is twenty eight days COVID free. Um, is, is that going to be a deciding factor? I guess this might be a, a question for Kun Si Suda. Um, with Thailand in general, what's the government's thoughts um, on opening up to the rest of the world? Um, is it a certain number of days to be COVID free? Um, or will, will there be certain measures to put in on the incoming uh, tourists? So for instance, um, one of our um, attendees had said, um, you know, it's Sonny um, Ada who's asked, you know, will there be COVID testing on arrival or quarantine? Is there any talk on when Thailand will open its borders internationally, Kun Si Suda? Oh, that's a very tough question. <laughs> I'm afraid that I don't have the answer for you. You know, everything's like up in the air and we are in a wait and see situation. Uh, we have many discussion about the, the, the travel bubble and so many things, you know. But for the time being, as far as I know, we haven't got any approval from, from the government. So when we can make it, we have many plans. We have already talked to our partner from uh, China, not, not not the whole China, but some part of China, Hong Kong, Taiwan. But, you know, for the time being, we cannot do anything. We just, you know, uh, prepare and talk to them. And we have so many plans, plan A, plan B. But we cannot do anything. We have to wait until we get the green right from, from, from the government. Um, you know, so, I, I, sorry, I don't have... A good answer for you guys. Um, is, is the government waiting on perhaps a certain number of days COVID free? Uh, I don't think so. We have to 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 care the, the local sentiment. Which part of Thailand, which country they get ready to welcome the tourists? Because you know it's very important for Thai people. We don't just want to have uh, the tourists in our country, but the local people, they are not happy. You know, we cannot do that. Oh, that's interesting. But, yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, things change every day. So maybe we hope we're going to get a good, you know, answer very soon. Because at, as, as I, I, I told you earlier, actually, there are some demand. Like for example, in the UK market, my mm -hmm. colleague just told me last night, uh, we work with Dinata by Go Medo, the big tour operator in the UK market, asking about uh, the booking trend and departure. You know what? In, in June and July, Thailand is ranking number two after Florida. People want to come to Thailand. So it's very really interesting. And more than 43% they would like to go to Phuket. And then Samui and then Kaolak. You know, so, you know, TAT, we, you know, we, we would like to have them as soon as possible. So we get ready uh, to promote Thailand. We have so many plans, so many campaigns, get ready to launch. But we just, 
we have to wait. I don't know until when. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, we have a good sign. <laughs> yes, it's a good sign that there's so much demand. I heard, yeah. I heard a startling statistic from the United Nations that international tourists um, traveling globally this year would drop by almost 80%. That's and right. That's right. And that's quite a lot. You mentioned that you were talking with the communities. What are the communities um, feeling, um, Kun Si Suda, in Thailand? They must be really hurting because tourism is such a big part of the economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for example, the people in Songkhla province, they said they are not ready to welcome the police, you know. Uh, but the people in Hua Hin of uh, Cha'am, they said, come on, we get ready for you. So uh, I believe that the government, they need to, to do some research or I don't know, you know, to, to make people happy to welcome tourists first. This is the first thing that we have to do. So the idea is we will bring the tourists to go to the destination that they are ready, that the local people are happy. This is the first thing we, we, we will do. Mm-hmm. So, what are some of the community's fears? Why why do they not want international tourists coming back? Because it's it is such because a big part of the economy. They care about their health and their safety because the number of the the new what we call uh, most of all of them come from the overseas, and when they when they heard the news in China. They are worried about the second wave, so they need to, to you know, to, to assure they will have their life with safety. They have their safety life. Yeah. Yes, and we saw what happened in New Zealand, didn't we? They had that's um, right. So they hesitate cases. to say yes or no. Yes. Um. Do you think that some of these local communities are? Um, feel more assured um, and trust in the government with these new protocols that are coming into place? Uh, many of them, yes. As Kun Marong said, we, uh, trust is the key. That's why TAT set up the CHA standard, SHA standard, to, to, to make people like, more happy and, and assured about the, the, the safety system, the safety measure in Thailand. Not only local people, but the tourists as well. So I think it's really important because more and more people will concern on cleanliness and hygiene. Uh, uh, they will pay more attention to the quality of accommodation and attraction by choosing uh, uh, reliable and quality or with safety support measure and avoid to travel to the place that are not confident. Yeah. And to, for TAT, I think the, the, the two list we focus more on the health and safety, so the information or the data on cleanliness and basic health we play an important role in the decision making to travel in order to reduce the, the risk from, from the pandemic. Uh, Kun Varong, you mentioned when people were arriving into Koh Samui, there was a 30-minute quarantine. Could you explain to me what exactly this was? Were they in, in a room? What did they have to do for that, that quarantine mm-hmm. process? I haven't gone through the process myself, but I've seen pictures and reports. Uh, um, um, in, in, in the, the QR code uh, is uh, divided into uh, two uh, uh, Two, two colors, red and green. Uh, red meaning you're coming from the, the uh, still COVID affected areas uh, in the Bangkok or, or and, and some other uh, 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 province. And, and if you are coming from the, the green area, you can you can easily go through, uh, well, much easier to go through the process. But uh, they ask you where you're from, they ask you where you've been to, uh, three or four days before, and where you're going to be, where you're going to stay, how long you're going to stay, making sure that uh, if uh, anything happens, you can be traced. And I've been told that um, this it goes through, it, it, this uh, application goes through the transportation, uh, the, the transportation that they take to the hotels. And, and actually, uh, the hotel itself has a, a, a health worker to, uh, attendant in each hotel and making sure that uh, everyone is registered. So 
So um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that uh, we watched uh, 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 every step of the, the move of the passengers uh, of the clients, but um, this is to 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 show the the, the level of, uh, level of the qualities and and I think it's create trust. And I, I don't think it's happening in in Kosovo alone. It's happening everywhere in Thailand. You know? In Phuket and in Krabi and in Chiang Mai, but uh, luckily, uh, uh, Samui has a uh, uh, Samui. Actually, Samui, they were very proud of the their own people. They said that uh, that their own numbers. They said that uh, it's been seventy three days of COVID free because it's an island, small island, so, mm -hmm. so they become COVID free uh, uh, province uh, 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 faster than 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 any other uh, uh, part. So so they 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 have a bit of a head start and, and uh, but I'm sure that uh, the rest of the countries I, I think some other some other destinations it has gone beyond what I, I just uh, I just explained so Thailand is is preparing ourselves uh, by learning from the local tourists mm -hmm. preparing ourselves to welcome the international tourists we don't know when it's going to happen um, and that's dependent on the government but I am sure that when the country is opening up again, everyone's uh, in uh, in Thailand and all the, uh, the tourism industry related will be very, very ready. Um, Kun Burong, have you personally been on a flight recently? Could you um, explain to me what I could expect if I turned up on a Bangkok Airlines flight? What, what do I expect to, from check-in to the flight itself? Obviously, everyone has to wear masks. Everyone has to wear. Everyone has to wear masks. Uh, fill in the forms. Um, um, queuing up to, uh, according to the social distancing rules. Um, um, going through the, the, the all the uh, social distancing to, uh, procedures at the airport. Uh, we Bangkok Airways provides and lounges for every passengers. We close them. We close them. We call, we're actually closing down our strength, uh, differentiation strength, but we have to do it to comply with the, with the government. We are reopening to the lounge uh, uh, in, in the month time with a new new normal concept, uh, serving food, but perhaps in a, um, not a plastic, but in a paper bag and, and social distancing, uh, uh, sitting uh, two meters apart, or whatever. We are deciding that product. Uh, Getting on a plane, oh, um, and definitely uh, it's Thailand. Everyone has to wear mask. Uh, the, uh, the first minute you enter the airport, and at least until you you exit the, the airport at the arrival to, um, um, on board, there's no food allowed on board. You cannot purchase food. Or water, water is only allowed for those who need to take medications or or, or babies uh, who need to take the 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 the, the, the the, the, the milk, um, but um, otherwise we are uh, uh, strictly enforced the rule that is being governed by the Civil Aviation of Thailand. It's it sounds painful, but it's also reassuring, and somehow it does. If we stick to that, it's also branding of Thailand and the branding of the airlines. Um, as we learn the process, we improved upon it and we make it a bit easier. We do understand the needs of the passenger, but, but, um, but people know, the local people understand and they comply. And, and I think that's, that's being a bit, being a little bit tough, being a bit uh, uh, stick to the rule. Mm -hmm. We do it well. It's also branding to the airlines and branding to Thailand. Yeah. Do you think this rule of no food and drink, um, will that limit it, uh, your international flights? Do you think this, is a, this will be a problem on the international flights? The international flight is not allowed within, um, uh, we are not allowed to fly international flights yet. Yes. Everything that we, we allow is uh, in um, um, domestic, but, um, uh, but as Bangkok Airways, we don't have a really, really long flight except to the Maldives and, uh, and, and uh, to, to, to Bombay to, before the uh, pre-COVID. But um, food will be will be essential, to, and, and I am sure when the country is opening up again for the international flights, the the, the civil aviation of Thailand will come out with a, a more relaxed uh, uh, procedures of how we serve food.
perhaps uh, like others, airlines serve food on a, on a, uh, a seal box and, and, and everything. And it's, we don't have to invent it. I think our artists is uh, doing it already. It's, it, just, it just depends on when the government allows us to do so. And we will, we will follow and comply. Mm. Do you think traveling with masks might be the new normal? Like after 9-11, everyone couldn't carry liquids on the planes and we had to check in our shoes or take off our shoes uh, as a security check. Do you think this could become the new normal? Unfortunately, yes. Or well, fortunately, yes. I, I'm not so sure whether, uh, which, uh, which answer is right. I feel comfortable to, uh, sitting next to someone who's wearing a mask. So if I'm, I feel comfortable next to someone wearing a mask, I should wear a mask also. Uh, one has to sacrifice to gain something, and if it's, it's it's good for the it's good for the community. So let's do it. Let's do it. I I I agree with that, and it could be new normal. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Okay, um, we've got a question from one of our attendees, William Henneke. Um, Why is there no checking for people coming from up country into Bangkok airports? Are you able to answer that, Khun Varong? Not exactly sure. Um, um, to, um, I have to find out an and, and, and answer on this. Um, coming from up country into that's a good question, Bill. Um, I'm, I must admit that um, I, I must find out more about this. Okay, perhaps you could email um, William at a later date with that answer. Okay. 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 Now, earlier I asked all the panelists um, if they had questions for each other, which uh, might be more industry specific and, and might get more to the point than my questions. So, um, would you like to start, Nick? Do you have a question for one of your fellow panelists? I think, um, you know, one of the things I, I was interested in, and, and I don't know if, what their thoughts are, but, you know, the balance between um, health and safety and, if you like, sending out more positive um, messaging. So rather than it all being about, you know, cleaning lifts and face masks and all of this, which becomes a little bit more like a hospital experience, as opposed to tourism and, and getting back to the, if you like, the spirit of what especially Thailand is and, and what we do. What, what do the others think about the messaging that's going to come out in the coming... Now, as, as I said earlier, like two months is a, seems like an eternity. So the messaging now I get maybe is health and safety, but how soon do we think it's going to evolve into something more positive? Um, you know, when, when do we feel that there's going to be more of a time? Do we think it's going to be in the next couple of months? Do we think it's going to be, you know, at the end of the year? You know, because I think for us, I think that's an important thing. We need to get back to the spirit of what, you know, travel is as opposed to just, you know, the, the concern of travel. I think there's got to be some sort of balance in that as well. I'd be interested in the other thoughts. The question is for me, Kun, 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 Kun Nick. Well, I think it's both of you, but you can oh, start okay. off, Kun Varel. Uh, okay. For me, that, that's, it's true. It's, 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 it's a bit painful to, to go through the, 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 the uh, traveling and, and flight process. But um, I am very sure that uh, uh, learning from the, the report, from, from what we have experienced at the airport on, on flights uh, uh, every day, I see that things are improving. To, uh, 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 we are more relaxed where can we, where we can relax. Um, um, if, uh, for example, to, um, uh, before the, the the government, the government act, the, the civil aviation actually stopped uh, the social distance rule of of a lot uh, of of you need to you need to uh, um, keep uh, the seats uh, one seat uh, next to the passenger empty. Um, so we cannot carry it, uh, 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 more passengers. But now to, the capacity is uh, we are allowed to take the uh, um, 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 passenger at full capacity. Uh, um, the distance rule is being relaxed uh, as, as, as we, we see. And, and I think uh, according to, to the government, uh, uh, that really, uh, wh wh wherever they can relax the rules, we will comply and, and we will we'll make sure that um, uh, we will. Uh, by, on ourselves, on Bangkok Airways, uh, trying to make uh, 
the flight as I don't want to say painless, but as uh, trouble free as possible uh, without uh, giving up any uh, safety and health precaution. I understand, Nick. Um, it's I, I don't want to hop on the plane and and seeing people uh, uh, wearing uh, masks and and uh, some some of the airlines actually wearing uh, uh, plastic uh, coats and and it's like going into an operation rooms and uh, going to, uh, on on a holiday. But um, that remains to be seen, and, and hopefully um, um, this kind of thing will be relaxed uh, uh, more and more, and, and we will return to uh, uh, travel to, uh, uh, in a in a most normal way uh, very soon. Thank you. Okay, Kun Sri Judah. Yeah, to me, I think we must be under this disease control measure until the the, the vaccine has been developed to prevent this disease. And uh, this has affected a change in, uh, in the behavior and pattern of travel and tourism. Uh, to me, I, I believe so. Whether you are happy or not, that you need to be under the, 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 the disease control measure, I think. So you think um, nothing will get back to normal until there's a vaccine? Not now. That's, that's what I think, yeah. not now. <laughs> Gosh. And, um, and Kun Varong, you said that the CAA is relaxing the social distancing rules. Does that mean you'll have full planes soon? Or is there a time limit on that? Actually, actually we have full planes uh, since uh, seven days ago. Um, okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's put less pressure on our cost and, and it's put uh, much less pressure on, on on the pricing to, uh, scheme, to, but it's only applied to, to flights uh, um, um, that is uh, not longer than, than two hours. But, uh, but uh, flight, uh, mostly the flight within the Thailand is, uh, is less than two hours. So, so that's applied to all domestic flights. But uh, when the international traveling uh, and uh, when uh, the international, we, when we opening up the country, uh, we will see that uh, the, this rule might be still enforced on the incoming international flights. I'm not so sure um, how, how, how that's going to affect it. But if the rules remain, the price of the tickets will not be the same. At least the price of the get tickets on the international long haul will not be the same because uh, the airlines cannot carry uh, passenger at full capacity. So there will be extra cost, and that extra cost will definitely pass on uh, to passengers and and liking it or not, it will have an effect on the number of tourist arrival. Okay, um, we've got a question from one of our attendees, Shania Samsuri. Um, it's to Kun Sisuda. What is your opinion on the matter of that all ASEAN countries are getting together to form a travel bubble, or do you think this should be done on a country to country basis? Uh, at the beginning, you know, many neighboring countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, I think they are not ready to do travel, travel bubble with Thailand. So that's why the idea, we are going to do the travel bubble with some country like uh, Taiwan, uh, Vietnam, with some part of China and, and Korea. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the, the TAT, we already talked to uh, the government of China and Macau and who else? Hong Kong, and they are all agree, you know, uh, uh, with this idea to do travel, uh, travel bubble to do two-way uh, tourism with us. And uh, I have heard from my colleague. Maybe next next week we are going to meet up with South Korea and and Australia. So hopefully. <laughs> It can be done very soon, but for the time being, to me, I don't think uh, uh, the country in Southeast Asia, not all the country in Southeast Asia, are ready for the travel bubble, except Vietnam, maybe Laos, and Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Kun Si Suda, I want to know how do I get Japan on that list? <laughs> because you know. Uh, yeah, maybe Japan, but not now again. Because according to the, the law and the regulation of, of Japan uh, itself, I don't think they are ready. 
Okay, we have a question from um, Mario Hardy. Um, so the TAT has a nice advert on the BBC at the moment showing empathy and care. Um, Mario would like to hear from Kun Varong and, and Nick Downing. Um, what are their brands doing to regain trust and confidence in, from their loyal guests? So maybe uh, Kun Varong, do you want to start off? Or Nick, Nick, you've popped up. Hi, yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, you know, I think one of the things that we're, we've spent a lot of time, even though we've been closed at the moment, um, we've spent a lot of time engaging with our key partners and letting them know what's still going on. Um, as I said, it's a little bit of a, um, a moving target at the moment because we don't know exactly what date we're going to open and what the, what the scenario is going to look like. And I agree with what um, Kun Sisudo mentioned that, you know, we have to operate within whatever whatever we're, we're sort of the environment that we're dealing with at the moment and, and the guidelines that we're dealing with. So, you know, whether it's agents from overseas or whether it's from regular guests that we're communicating with, I've written emails to, to or reached out to many of our regular guests, sort of just seeing how they are um, and just staying engaged. Again, we're quite small, so we're, you know, we're not trying to hit the whole world and we're a small independent hotel as opposed to a large brand. So we don't have the power of the communication of a large brand either. So what we're doing is very specific to us, I guess. Um, and it's just a matter of communication. It's just, you know, keeping the channels open, let them know what's happening, um, reassuring them that Thailand, actually, it, it's interesting. I've had many guests and many agents contacting me actually sort of saying, wow, Thailand's doing great, you know, and, and that's great for us, but, you know, it needs to be, both sides of the plane journey, so to speak, before it gets back to normal. So, you know, there's just a lot of communication at the moment. That's that's the most important thing, whether it's updating on, on online channels, whether it's going through key partners overseas. We do have key, key representatives who, even though they're on Ridge's situation with us, they're, they're still engaged as well. So, I, as I said, it just comes back to that. Okay. Kun Varong, what, what's uh, Bangkok Airlines? Yeah, pretty much the same as Kunik says is communicate, communicate, talk, tell the people, keep on talking uh, through social media, through the digital media. Um, um, we're trying to make clips and actually showing ta what the process is like going through 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 all the uh, quarantine process. Uh, what uh, what what you will be expecting when you arrive at the, at, at the airport. Uh, we try to to communicate and, and re-communicate and, and telling the same story again and again and again and, and whatever we have, something new, new procedures, we communicate, we tell the people, as Kunik said, um, uh, we cannot reach everyone, but, um, but through social media, uh, uh, people are, I think people have a lot of time, to, uh, they, are, they are really uh, looking at our movement and, and, and really spending time uh, studying to, um, uh, on uh, each, each every airline's move and how, how they approve uh, on their procedures in terms of uh, dealing with uh, uh, the COVID prevention procedures. So people are, are, are having an eye, an eye on us and, and we, we keep communicating and telling them through the, the social media. So we're telling it today, we will tell the, perhaps the same stories on Monday and whatever we do, we tell them again next week uh, because people need to reassure and we will keep on providing, keep telling. So communicate, communicate, and communicate. Do you find social media has become more important? It is, isn't it? Um, especially during the, the lockdown. I think that there's uh, much more engagement uh, in the social, uh, on the social medias during the, the work from home uh, process. Uh, as every country, Thailand has gone through lockdown process. It's, painful for everyone. Uh, it's been two constant uh, months of being at home. I am still at home, um, but uh, a lot of people are going to work. Uh, and during that time, people really, really visiting uh, the social media is coming to, onto our website. A lot of comments, uh, suggestions, uh, compliments, complaints uh, here and there, of course. Uh, but we're learning from, from, from what, what was seen on the social media. And, and we know what they need. And they need to know, they need to be informed. So yes, Kunik said, communicate, communicate, and keep on communicating. 
Great. Um, are there any more questions from attendees? Please feel free to add your questions on the, the Q&A function down on the bottom panel of your screen. Um, we're all waiting for you. That would be great. Um, yeah, I, I, I just find it so interesting that there's and heartwarming that there's been such a communication and discussion between the communities and these big companies, you know, in the opening up with the uh, with travel and let's hope you know we can do the same internationally i think a lot of people are looking for these new travel bubbles that will appear and and let's hope that it's in the not too distant future um hopefully before a vaccine um i was kun sisuda you mentioned do you think it, it's dependent on a vaccine Hello. Are there any other questions coming through from attendees? Carmen, I, I'll jump in just quickly. Yes. Uh, just one thing, as, as we mentioned before we went live, I think, you know, in terms of the, the travel bubble and people traveling and everything, and, you know, again, we're a very small hotel, but the interesting thing was we we have started to see some interest towards the end of the next, towards the end of the year. So, um, you know, again, it's all dependent on, on flights and, you know, restrictions being open, but I, I sincerely believe that people are wanting to travel. They're gonna, they're gonna try and get on a, on a plane as quickly as they can. I think the other thing that came up this, this week, I noticed in Thailand, there was a discussion about, you know, should it be going more high end now rather than more mass market? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in terms of money, will people have the money to travel? So it'll be interesting to see what happens towards the end of the year. But, you know, I think internationally, I think we're, we're expecting next year. But, you know, it, it's interesting that we got, you know, quite a significant booking at the end of this year and it was from Europe. So it's like there, there is some rays of light there. So it's just it's hope. hoping that it comes out more than that. OK, we've got a question from Celine Tu from Malaysia. Um, how can ASEAN strive through together by road? Um, I don't know, uh, Celine, I guess that this is for Kun Si Suda. Um, can ASEAN strive through this together, do you think? Yes, of course. <laughs> Actually, we, we, we have the committee. We work together as ASEAN country. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, I'm not the member. I'm, I'm, but, but what I have learned from my colleague, they, they have uh, a plan to work together to make ASEAN to be one destination. Yeah, so of course we have something to do together. Uh, we start from CLMV first and then that's the first phase. And the second phase will be the whole country uh, in ASEAN, 10, 10 countries in ASEAN. We are going to work together to make uh, ASEAN to be the top destination, including intra-ASEAN. Ask people in the ASEAN country travel within ASEAN. So we call intra-ASEAN. And then the non-ASEAN country to come to ASEAN and combine the destination, you know, uh, in, in 10 countries in the ASEAN. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think we have some marketing plan to work together. Oh, that's great to hear. And we've got another question from Sonny Ada again. Um, what are some of the penalties or consequences for those who don't wear face masks or operators who don't um, comply with the social distancing measures. I guess this is Kunvaral. For me, it's very simple. To, uh, we adhere to the rules. If you don't wear masks, you're not allowed on board. Uh, pretty much uh, they, they're not being penalized in terms of uh, monetary, but uh, they, uh, they will not be allowed uh, uh, onto the aircraft. Pretty much that for me, for as a uh, airline, from the airline point of view. Have you met much resistance? Have people flatly refused? Um, um, not really, but uh, some some lost their their masks during the the transit on the bus to the plane. But um, on the aircraft, we have a few to, uh, uh, that we 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 can 
provide to passengers. But no, um, some some of them might pull down a little bit, and and, and we would uh, the team would go and ask for the, the, to to uh, especially to properly to uh, uh, wear the mask, uh, and that's. That's that's a bit uh, troublesome, but um, I, as Kunsi Suda said, we must obey the rule. We're doing something right. Thailand is doing something right. So, so whatever we do right, we adhere to it, adapt, adapt it as time goes uh, uh, go, go, goes along. Uh, but um, but uh, whatever we're doing right, uh, we have to keep doing it. Uh, and also, I agree, connect and, and uh, has to, to ease uh, uh, and adapt. Uh, from time to time to make uh, um, uh, 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 traveling uh, more uh, lively and enjoyable. Yes, um, we have another question from Arvind Kumar Kusala. I hope I pronounced that properly. Sorry if I didn't. Um, are you associated with any medical institute to raise confidence with the consumer? Um, I'm not sure which panelists this is um, directed to. I guess it could apply to to all of you. Is there a particular a particular medical institution that's come on board recently? Coming up, I'll jump in just quickly. I mean, from us again, we're we're quite a small um, independent hotel, so we're we're not sort of going out there with a, a major organisation as such. That being said, in addition to SHA, um, with the certification here to give real confidence and trust to the local market and to the international as well, uh, we have looked at a couple of international options as well. Uh, we're part of also Preferred Hotels, and uh, they've, they've created an association with a company called Bureau Veritas, which is an interesting one that, that gives also, a, 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 um, if you like, a bit more of an international seal on it as well. But for us, uh, the most important is to, to to get the SHA certification and show that we're, we're leading the way within Thailand itself. Okay, I think that's across all of Thailand, isn't it? These, um, the safety and health authorization. Yes, yes. And, and hotels are signing up now. So, you know, you're seeing them on social media. A lot of the messaging that's coming out is, is showing that they're doing that. It's very detailed, which is fantastic. Um, you know, I'm what sure- are some of the things you have to comply with as oh, a hotel? Everything from, you know, it's not just having hand sanitizer stations and face masks and, and different things like that. There's certain things that go everywhere from the way that you handle luggage to the way that you serve meals, to what you're doing in the kitchen, uh, to how you're, you're dealing with um, your spa, for example. Um, so it's very, very detailed. And, and to go through it, yes, you do a self-audit and then you actually get a, a proper audit and the certification. So that was a great initiative by TOT and the Ministry of Health. And uh, yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of the hotels and a lot of the organizations within Thailand supporting that. Will that be like a sticker or something you can put on your website, for instance, to assure customers? It is. And it's, um, you know, I think that, you mean, um, you know, hotels have really just started um, coming up with that. Um, our sister property in uh, Pattaya, they've already, they've already gone through the process. Um, one of them's already open. Um, but for us, we're still going through the process because, of course, we're, we're not operating at the moment. But we, we're going through some of the process even as we speak now. Okay. Um, we've got another question from an anonymous attendee. What are your thoughts about drive-in destinations as opposed to fly-in destinations? So I guess that means domestic travel. Um, Kun Sisuda, is, is that the way forward for, <laughs> for the foreseeable future? Yeah, more and more people cut down on public transportation. Uh, domestic tourists reduce travel by public transportation and use private car for, for uh, uh, more traveling. Uh, you can see during the weekend, you know, the destination like uh, nearby Bangkok, which is not more than 300 kilometers. Uh, it's very, very, very packed during, during uh, uh, holiday because people love driving not too far. And now, according to the limitation of the seat or the flight to, to some destination like Phuket, Chiang Mai, and people, they love to use their own car, the private car, because the, the price of the gasoline is very low now, so it's a good opportunity for them to drive to the destination. And this is uh, the trend that's going to be like uh, more popular among the domestic travelers. 
or even the expat, you know, the the uh, the, the foreigner who works in Thailand, uh, you know, more than two million of them, unbelievable. The number is big. This is the big market size. Mm -hmm. You know, when they yeah when they live in Bangkok or when they were in in in, in Thailand, they love to travel. So this is good opportunity for them to travel uh, in the country. And we consider this is another segment for, for us, the expat, two million of them who live in Thailand, who, who works in Thailand. You know, they can be our uh, news uh, segment that we are going to promote, you know, them to, to, to travel in the country, in, the, in Thailand. Okay, um, we've got another question from William Henneke. Um, his concern is that if Thailand is too careful, um, you know, the country will be safe, but um, it might be to the detriment of the economy. Um, what, what do you think about this, Kun Sisuda? Uh, are you being too careful? <laughs> uh, actually, you know, uh, the, the, the neighboring country, like from Myanmar, the border not 100% open yet. You know, when, uh, when Myanmar people come to Thailand, we need 14 days for quarantine. This is the law and the regulation, the existing, existing one. So, uh, when we change this, I believe when we relax the, the law and the regulation, I believe our enabling country can come more and more, but for the time being, we can't, unfortunately. I don't know, I, did I answer the question? Let me read the question again. Cross land border, any health or for cross-land border, example for Malaysia. Oh, yeah. So Bambang Hartono has asked about cross-land borders. So I guess mm -hmm. the border from Thailand to Malaysia, not yet? Not yet. You need 14 days for quarantine for the time being. Okay. All right. And Celine too from Malaysia again. Um, this is for Nick. How were your hotel um, your hotel handling in the increased cost and time required to maintain the high standards and, and low rates. So I guess it's, is, will your rates increase? I guess that's another question everyone wants to know. Will it be more expensive? Look, I, as Kun Barong said, there's, there's certainly implications to how you operate now and it's a very different scenario. That being said, you know, I, I must admit I'm one of these people that says, you know, all of these pictures of hotels cleaning their lifts and all of that sort of thing. To a certain extent, we were doing it already. Now we're just being a lot more visible. And yes, you know, obviously the frequency is more there. Um, from I can, I can only speak from us. You know, our team, um, we've had many sessions and many discussions about how we're going to operate. And, and honestly, there's a lot of collaboration between the different departments and how we're going to do things. It's no longer, you know, it's not just housekeeping that's going to be cleaning, for example. So, I, you know, I think... Yes, there are some additional costs. I personally, if you ask about rates, I, one of the reasons that we're not opening at this particular point is, you know, we're a rate leader in, in, in Bangkok and in Thailand. We're certainly at the top end of the market. For us to go out there and compete with, you know, the, the local staycation rates out, out there at the moment, yes, we could put a rate out there, but it's significantly higher. And I just don't see the short term, um, the long term outweighs the short term. So I think, you know, I think we've got to be careful about, um, I, I would love to open now, you know, I, I, absolutely. But I think there's also a case if you want to maintain your brand standards and you want to maintain the long term positioning of your property um, and the CM, you know, that, that's critical for us. Um, and there are a few hotels in town that are, are maintaining that standard, which is great. And I think there is talk. We've, we've talked with a lot of international partners about rates next year, for example. And I, I don't see a lot of, yeah, there may be some short-term implications at the moment. But I, you know, I think a lot of the hotels are going to open with probably similar rates to when we close. I, 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 that's certainly our approach. We're not going to be out going out there and sort of discounting massively across the board. 
I just think that's going to do more damage for not just our hotel, but also for the industry. I don't think it's necessary. Okay, great. Well, I think we're about to wrap it up. Would, um, would all the panelists like to have one final thought, anything to say? Nick, shall we start with you, seeing you're already in the, the <laughs> view? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, okay. no I, you know, again, thank you to Pada for having us today. And uh, I think, you know, there's been a lot of webinars that come up and, and discussion about where it's going to go. I think it's all a matter of timing. You know, from our perspective, as I've said, I think the most important thing is to get back into hospitality as well, not just the health and safety side of it, but also, you know, bring back to life what, what made Thailand so special and what is making Thailand so special. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll come out of this sooner rather than later. And it's obviously going to start with smaller cases, but, you know, hopefully we'll be able to create these travel bubbles and get people traveling again. And, you know, whether it's going down to Samui on Bangkok Airways or going to the Maldives or, you know, I, people want to travel. And, and I think we've just got to try and find the, the, the safest and healthiest way of being able to do that and to give people the trust that that's, you know, that we're going to deliver an experience that's health and safety, but also, you know, genuine at heart. So that's my final thought. But thank you for having us. Great. Uh, Kun Sisuda, uh, final thought? Uh, maybe Kun Varong can jump in here. Do you have a final thought? I'd like to add a little bit on the, on the environment issues. Mm -hmm. um, lately, um, Thailand, um, uh, because of COVID, uh, you see uh, news of elephants uh, roaming around freely, freely in the closed national parks and parts of uh, schools of dolphins uh, um, swimming to, uh, off the coast of Phuket, uh, manatees uh, grazing uh, uh, seagrass uh, off the coast of uh, uh, Koh Krabi. And, 15 turtle nests, turtle nests has been found on the beaches of Koh Samui. Um, so Thailand is pristine, it's beautiful, and it's, it's, it's remind me of the, uh, how, how wonderful uh, my country is. What bothers me is a little bit is uh, on the uh, social media, a little bit people say that, oh, let's go have a look at these things uh, while it lasts. Why? Why it has to be while it lasts? Why don't we sit together and make Make this last longer. Mm -hmm. No, not last longer. Let's make this uh, last forever. Because if you can do that, it's, it's branding to, of the country. And I think people, some people would choose to come to Thailand because they know that Thailand is taking care, good care of their environment. And I'm not saying uh, uh, to the animals only, I'm saying uh, to how we use our plastic, how we, how we recycle the plastic and how we uh, getting uh, rid of our, um, our, our trash, all things. Uh, I think uh, uh, COVID has taught us something mm. and let's learn from it and, and we'll put it together as uh, another branding and trust to the country. Thank you. Thank you. Some, some good thoughts on the environment there, Kun Varong. Kun Sisudal, are you there? Uh, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to say? Yeah, I totally agree with Kun Varong. You know, actually, TAT, we have been uh, working on uh, for quite some time, which respond to the tourism trend that most tourists are concerned more on what they are doing and what are they returning to uh, society when they travel. So I would like to to say something about the responsible tourism, which is our goal that uh, we would like TAT, uh, we like Thailand, you know, to to do more, to make it better than before about the, the, the responsible tourism campaign. So we would like to ask Thai people and the stakeholder, you know, uh, to be in the same the same track, the same direction as TAT. Yeah, so uh, this is what I would like to say. Thank you. Kunsi Suda, some very thoughtful discussion there. It was, it was great to hear about the community involvement and also the uh, responsible tourism that we can look forward to in the future. Um, I think that wraps up our discussion today. We've got a few unanswered questions in the Q&A box, but hopefully we can answer those by email um, very soon. I'll hand you back to Paul now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmen.
And once again, thank you to our speakers, Nick Kunvarong and Kun Sursura for joining us today. And a very special thank you to the Tourism Authority of Thailand for being our destination partner on this first week of the Dream2 Travel Festival. I just wanted to mention a couple things. Uh, you know, we talked a little, we talked a lot today, I heard a lot today about the Safety and Health Administration that's uh, just been released by, by Thailand. We did have a session on that yesterday. Uh, a recording of that will be available for all attendees. Uh, we'll, we'll be sending a wrap up at the end of the week. But once that video is available, we'll also have that available on the schedule. So you'll see it on the app and um, you'll probably see it on our YouTube page as well. A recording of this webinar will also be available, um, but just give us a couple of days just to uh, edit the video and we will, um, we will then share it with all our participants, also those who registered. I know a lot of the people who registered for the event, uh, time zone makes it difficult for, for, um, for them to join today. So that wraps up today's webinar on Dream to Travel at the Dream to Travel Forum Trust. And again, I'd like to thank all of our partners and, and speakers for today. So again, once again, thanks to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, uh, BBC, uh, and Carmen for moderating, as well as our speakers from the Siam, Nick and Kun Varong from Bangkok Airways. I just also want to be, to be aware of some of our other pro uh, the other programs we have later today. Uh, continuing later this afternoon, we have a couple of live experiences. At 2 p.m., we have the live experience. Hello, Bangkok. Hello, locals. Um, so please do join us then. And then later in the afternoon at 4.30, we have the live experience, Shang Mai, I Miss You. Um, but right after this, we have our virtual networking coffee break. So I think my team has already sent the link in the chat. So at 11.30, please join the coffee break. Your chance to network with our attendees and those who've uh, joined today's session. You guys can, ch you guys can chat about uh, today's, uh, today's forum, maybe follow up on some of the things that have been said there and, uh, or make new connections or reach out and see how everyone's doing and, uh, and just, you know, generally just have a chat. So get, again, thank you all for joining us this morning and I hope to see you again later this afternoon and take care and have a good afternoon.